Welcome to Deep Lizard. My name is Chris, and in this episode, we're going to see how our network performs with and without max pooling. So far in this series, we've been working with a convolutional neural network that has max pooling layers. And the main reason for this was to be instructive so that we could see, okay, this is how you use max pooling. This is what max pooling is because it's so common. But I don't know if any of you have stopped to think what would actually happen if we removed max pooling would we have better or worse performance? Well, in this video, we're gonna see that and we're gonna test a network that has max pooling and one that does not have max pooling. So before we begin, stop for a minute and think for yourself and try to try to make a bet and see what do you think? Is, is our performance gonna go up or will it go down? So, all right, let's jump to Jupyter Notebook and let's see what happens. So the first thing that we're gonna do is utilize our network factory that we talked about uh, previously in the course. And we're gonna use this to set up two networks. So our network factory is very simple. We know that all we need to do is pass in the name of the network, and then we need to have an if statement that checks for each name that we want. So for example, we have here the max pool network, and then here we have the no max pool network. So we can see in the max pool network that we have a max pool layer in the first convolutional block. And then we have another max pool layer in the second convolutional block. And so then down here in the no max pool uh, network, we have everything is exactly the same, except we've commented out the two, the two max pool layers. Or really, I like to call these max pool operations, but we can call them layers uh, as well. So now these two networks are exactly the same, except one has max pooling and the other one does not. So the other change that we had to make though in the um, no max pool network is that we had to change the number of input features coming into the linear layer after we do the conf layers. So we can see here that the max pool network has a lot less features by the time we get to the first linear layer relative to the no max pool. And the actual channels do not change, but the dimension of the channels change. So max pooling, removes dimensions from each channel, but it doesn't actually affect the number of channels. And that's why we can see here that even though the channels stayed the same between the two in the convolutions, the number of features that we end up with by the time we get to the linear layer are different. So that's just something to keep in mind. We do expect that because the max pooling, uh, part of what max pooling is doing is sampling and reducing the size of the data coming through our network. So now we're ready to set up our run configurations. And what we're going to do here is simply add the two networks that we wanna test. We have max pool and we have no max pool. And we're not gonna test any other, uh, changing any other parameters. We're just gonna stick with these defaults here. And we're gonna test these two networks. And recall that now we're using the network factory. So here we're making a call to the network factory for each run. So I've already ran this, and so let's take a look at the results. Drum roll. Oh, I wanna go ahead and get down here because I've sorted by accuracy. Yep, here it is. Okay, so we can see here that we have achieved 98.2% accuracy and the no max pool network has outperformed, it's really smoked the max pool network. The highest level of accuracy that the max pool network was able to achieve was 93.5%. And so you can see that this is quite a substantial difference between max pool and no max pool. So are you surprised by these results? Um, <laughs> most people might think that, oh, if we add max pooling to our network, it'll automatically perform better. But as we can see here, this isn't necessarily the case. So I'm gonna offer up one reason as to why this might be the case. And then if you have other reasons as to why the max pooling network is performing worse than the no max pooling network, then put your reasons down in the comments. So in this case, the reason that max pooling, the max pooling network is performing worse than the no max pool network has to do with the data that we're training on. So if you recall, we're using the fashion MNIST data set and I believe that in our case, the reason that this is, is happening with us is because our data is already so simple that whenever we pull out and we, we extract the, the max values, we're actually losing too much data. We're not leaving enough there. 
So let me show you what I mean. We're going to jump over to deeplizzard.com and we're going to look at the um, max pooling operation demo. And then we're going to just switch over to the fashion MNIST data set. And we're going to run this here to see an actual max pool happen. So let's do this. And so you can see in this case, we have the same uh, default. This is like the lowest max pooling values that you can put in. And this is the same values that we have in our network. And so this is like the, the least amount that we can pool. And you can see that although this, this output is still just from a visual standpoint, it still looks relatively close to the original input, but we have lost a lot of data. If you look here in this region here, where we have just this line, we lost like quite a bit of detail regarding like the, the graphic on the shirt. And I think shirts are actually a category that, that come out pretty well. Let's look at like a pullover. Uh, what is a pullover? It's like a sweatshirt. Let's look at a bag. This one will probably come out well too. Yeah, the bag looks pretty good. Let's try to find, um, maybe the pullover will work. Yeah, this pullover is interesting. Yeah, so you can see like this pullover, for example, it's hard to even make it out after, let me zoom in, after we, we get the output. Now, something to keep in mind is that we, in our network, we were doing two max poolings. Like we were doing one convolution, then a max pooling, and then another convolution and a max pooling. And so you can imagine that we're throwing away a lot of data each time we do the max pool. And just with one max pool on this input, we're already like, it's already becoming kind of visually hard to tell what this is just with our own eyes, much less the network. Let's just see if there's one more, maybe this shirt. So this is a Nike shirt. If you can see, if I zoom out, you can kind of see the check a little bit better. The Nike check. Um, but let's run this. I bet we lose the check. Yeah, so in this case, like one max pool, you basically, we lost the check. You can barely even see it there anymore. And so what I think is happening for this particular data set is that we're just throwing away way too much data and it was causing the network to, to really struggle in some of these uh, categories.